So let's talk about our, our psychological and spiritual toolbox. And yes. these times are very difficult. How do we deal with them? So, and that's why it's so important to have these tools in our toolbox. Yeah, 100%. Right. So, so do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start with my one. So in this toolbox, everybody can, you know, again, grab a pen or paper or write really down some, some take, get some notes, because I think it's a really good time to take some notes on this kind of these things. The first thing I want to talk about, James, is mindfulness, because in my toolbox, everybody should have mindfulness. It's extremely a helpful tool because what mindfulness does is it teaches us to focus our attention on our body our breathing, our senses, our thoughts, and our emotions in any given reality. And uh, mindfulness skills can come in really, really handy. They are, and in fact, I have something really good to talk about with, with mindfulness. There, it's a great acronym that we can all use for, my, for mindfulness, and it's STOP, S-T-O-P. So S is stop what you are doing and put things down for a minute. T, take a breath. O, observe your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions. And P, proceed with something that will support you in the moment. So if you can remember, to, you know, to, to bring you to a place of mindfulness, remember the word stop. Okay, so stop what you're doing. Take a breath. Observe your thoughts and your feelings and whatever emotions and then proceed with something that will support you in the moment, whatever that would be for you. That's great, Kelly. Is that a good one? It's a good one, yeah. So mindfulness for me, number one. Okay. Mine was a uh, uh, relationship with self, self-love. Excellent. Have a relationship with yourself. It's hard to have a relationship with anyone else or love anybody else if you don't love yourself first. So first, love you, self-love. Love everything about you. Realize that you're different than everybody else. You're unique. And I always say we're all diamonds and we're cut with each experience in life as a facet. And everyone is different and the facets are different. And you never have to be like anybody else. You've got to be who you are, unique to this planet, just like the snowflakes. You know, you, so know, you actually taught me that about me. Really? You actually did. You would always say you're unique. It's good <laughs> to be unique. You're unique. And I would think, I guess I am, but you know, you kind of hesitate on that because I didn't, I didn't have what you were describing, but I do now. Well, and I think it's so important society that people have to measure things or, you know, things change yes. today. Now everyone wants to be an influencer, but it, it things have changed because it, the differences are what's really what it's about. Our, our society was, you have to be this way to be successful and then be wealthy. Right. And if you're rich, right. you're happy. And, and it's all a bunch of BS because if you don't totally. have that sense of, self, first of all, they have nothing totally. and people try to be what want them to be and you can't do that you can never be what anyone wants right. you to be you gotta be who you are right. you know it's the only way we'll be freed it's the only way we'll, we'll be free and liberated is to be who we are and what other people think of you is none of your business say that all the time so such true. a great one it's so true but yeah. self-love is so important for that oh gosh okay well i love that james i have a coffee for myself and i left it downstairs okay oh. well. <laughs> do you want to go down and get it no i'll be fine so the what the second one that i have are talk, let's talk about resources so in your toolbox i want everybody to think this what are my strengths because when you are going through a situation you need to know what your strengths are so it gives you as helps you with your self-esteem so renee would you put this poster up. I have a little strengths list here, and I think it's really important. And we'll put it up, and it'll be posted on my uh, website and on my um, Facebook page. But everybody, check out this um, the strengths to see because some of the strengths you want to look at, so you can always pull them out and remind yourself you have wisdom. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you have extreme curiosity. Maybe you're a leader. Maybe you have persistence. Maybe you have social awareness. Maybe you have forgiveness. Maybe you are wonderful at cooperation. Maybe you have modesty. You know, gratitude is one of these strengths. So I want everybody to look at this list, if you will. And maybe you have love, confidence. And there's some great ones here, but it's a strength list that will help us 
all when times get tough you have to pull out your resources and your to resource yourself because i remember um years ago i had been uh married my first husband was uh helpless constantly helpless and i wasn't married long <laughs> he was constantly helpless but i remember thinking to myself i must have chosen him for a reason because what it did is it made me become strong so if you feel helpless and you know you may not have anybody to help you you want to recognize what strengths that you have because helpless does not need to be your first response okay you don't need to go into helplessness you need to know what your strengths are and i love this quote by victor frankel victor frankel was a humanistic existentialist and he wrote uh, among many th books man's search for meaning which was oh, just I a, right such a great book yeah and great. what he says is between stimulus so between something, between a stimulus and the response, there is a space. And in that space, it's our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and freedom. That's great. Isn't that right. great? Right. So get your resources. You really want to get your resources. How, where are you? What are your strengths? Yeah, make a list of them. Make a list of your strengths. So when times get rough, you'll go, wait a minute. I am really curious and I have a lot of wisdom here. You know, and, and Kelly, I was, and this sounds really interesting, trite and strange and weird, which is what I am. But I always tell people in some strange way, remember all those different sperm that was trying to fertilize the egg. You're the one that made it. And that means you had to be wrong to make the first right. one. Right. You're the one that made it. You're the one that made it. <laughs> right. You're the strongest one. So right. that's something to be said for the millions of so, That that's is so true. You oh, my God. So let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> right. You made it. There were no accidents. You no. You come nope. with everything you need to. You're, right. you're, you're, you come with everything you need to go on your journey here but it's when you listen to other people and make their reality your reality you go down the wrong turn that you make the wrong right. turn you go down the you, dead end you make the wrong choice yeah. you make the yeah. wrong choice you try to please wow. others with someone else's life instead of your own be right. get your own inner strength you got it you just gotta remember right it. Yeah. get your own inner strength what is the website that this will be on well jessica i'll put it on my website um and you put it on yours too Okay, and you'll yep. put it on your book. You'll put it on your Facebook page, and I'll put it on my yep. Facebook page. Yep. Yeah, it'll be up either today or tomorrow, probably. Okay. Wow. Do you want to, I know. Well, you, you took a lot of my strengths from my toolbox. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, my, my another thing which I was thinking about myself, which I teach people, is um, living the golden rule: treat another oh. person how you want to be treated. Every day and every way, it's an opportunity. Yes. And everything is a growth period. Everything is an opportunity. Everything that even doesn't work out, it's an opportunity to see how you're going to respond to it as an opportunity and try to come from a positive point of view, even though it might not have seemed like it's positive, there's something positive that'll come out of it because we're all beings of love. We're not negative. We're not fear. Fear is a human emotion. Our really who we are, our origin is love. Our soul is love. So remember that and treat someone else that how you want to be treated. That's the best way to live life. Treat someone else like you want to be treated. And then along with that is change the change your your, your space, your energy. When and if someone's negative towards you, make it positive. For example, this morning, which I knew I'd use today, I went to a hardware store to get some things for my new top. <laughs> and um, I had this bucket of stuff, and I'm, I'm walking to the cash register, and it's open. And I see the, the one is open, so I walk to the cash register, and there's a lady behind me, and she went, which is one item. I go, oh, please, you go before me. And she goes, I will. I was in line. And I said, oh, thank you for letting me know there was a line. I didn't see it, but thank you for letting me know that. And she's like, oh. Because wow. instead of reacting in a negative way, right. it was in a positive way. And then I went to the other cash register. Lady, I love that, by the way. She said, I love the way you you'd said that. I said, yeah, well, just being positive and loving. <laughs> I didn't know there was a line. Right. Most of us, we go to situations, we oh. don't know that, that person doesn't know something. Right. Even that person, we don't know that they're, my friend Kelly told me this, they're limited in some way. I mean, they're not aware of it. They're asleep. They're 
<laughs> they're walking walk. brain stems. <laughs> they're walking brain stems. Or, you know, walking comas because oh this weekend someone compared me to an illusionist at a dinner. I'm like, she didn't oh. should, should really know my work and she knew Uri Geller's work. I'm like, <laughs> an illusionist. An illusionist. I said, I beg your pardon? Yeah, no, you need to see. And she was a Virgo, an older lady. And she said, I said, you really need to see me work before you say those terms that you might not know what I do. But anyway, it was funny. But it, it, a lot of people are just walking comas. Yeah, yeah. They're walking so, blurters. So they're blurters. <laughs> they don't even think. It just plop, blurts. They're blurt out. Out, Thank you. Out. <laughs> Mitchell says, I learned the saying, what you think of me is none of my business from you, James. I said it to a person who was trying to make me feel bad because we were disagreeing on a subject. They were being rude and said something like, do you know what I think of you? And I said your quote, what you think of me is none of my business. And they stopped and went silent. They couldn't find anything to respond to it. I love that saying. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That That's came good. to me when I was working with, um, I was on the Howard Stern show. And for, <laughs> years, <laughs> for years, I didn't want to do that. They invited me when it was years ago. They invited me on that show. And I was like, oh, I can't. I do not like what he talks about the whole thing. And then one day I thought to myself, what good am I? How authentic and genuine am I? If I can say I'm afraid or I'm fearful, then what good is the value yeah. of my work? So, James, you got to do it. So I went to New York, got up five o'clock in the morning in the hotel room, and I was scared. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, crap. So I asked for um, I asked for Michael the Archangel to help me, and I swear, Kelly, I was being of light, blonde hair, and kind of a sword going. You are taken care of. And I walked into that studio, and Howard was just getting ready to sit down. And I walked to my seat. He goes, "You know, I don't believe in this crap that you do," and it just came through. You, you really think I care what you believe? What you think of me is none of my business. And That's he loved where me. it came from. Where it came from that I used it. Yeah from that moment uh, and uh, he loved we had a great time after that he really he really liked my genuineness my integrity right. my authenticity he might not have understood it but he didn't judge me after that see well plus he <laughs> loves great wit and really what you said just really just yeah, kind of goes right, right to the to the it doesn't matter to me i mean it's just amazing to me that's a well, you all of you and yeah. and it's the other Event, which is just which is really important is no one can love you more than you can love yourself because no one else knows you better than you know yourself which goes to self-love which goes to self-love and the other thing I, I i you put this in yours also is that the power of observation instead of judging someone observe them don't for don't have a knee-jerk reaction of judging someone that's right. what you're used to like kelly just said stop break have a pause look yeah. around observe and observation really helps a lot in every instance it even does. if you're in an elevator at the airport observation <laughs> i couldn't help it i, I know you're, you blurred I it couldn't. I, I i blurred it i i got <laughs> triggered what can i say i got triggered i think i got triggered twice <laughs> you're right i if i had that pause victor frankel i would be good but i, I something happened and i just you know, so, so well, listen, I'm a work you, in progress. You're, 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 we're all works in progress. What, um, the other thing you said also, Kelly, which is really, really powerful, is forgiveness. Forgiveness is right up there because, you know, by, by yeah. forgiveness, you, you see the bigger picture. You, you see that that person that you're working with is, is not aware. They might be on a certain level that you're not. They, you don't know what their background is. Where have they just come right. from? When you meet someone, you meet all of their stuff. So say every time you meet somebody, you're meeting a whole moving truck of all of their experiences right. from the past and situations and emotions. Right. You're and, meeting all of that. And you're absolutely right. And what happens is when that happens is at first they might hide that from you. And then you discover a whole busload of stuff. Yeah. It's a real interesting thing. And that's the point where you have to go, wait a minute. And you have to learn about who you are in that moment with regard to everything that you're seeing. And, and that's where forgiveness, kindness, compassion can come in. And, and observation and self-love. Yeah. Self-love. Right. Recently where I was um, forced to kind of meet some people. And um, I could tell right away that these couple people didn't really like me. I just, I, I don't know where it was coming from, but they didn't yeah. know me. And and I have to be kind of I have to they're friends of our friends and I got to be nice to these people I'm like, wow. But at the same time, I have to be honest with who I am. I got to love myself enough to say, yeah. that's not working for me. 
don't treat me that way. That's not working. So boundaries, another one is boundaries. Spiritual boundaries is boundaries. spiritual and psychological. Boundaries is everything. That should definitely be in your toolbox, everybody, is to set a boundary and then hold the boundary. And, and, and with that boundary comes self-empowerment because you're empowering mm -hmm. yourself and you're telling someone, that's not allowed anymore. And you're not giving right. your power away, which right. so many of us did as growing up and trying to please others and trying to be approved by mother and father and our teachers and society. We have to approve. And no, it's no, you know, you're giving away your power, self-empowerment. And it's when you can step into that, then you are so whole and ready to go. When you can step into that self-power of what you just said, it's yeah. huge. It's enormous to be able to do that. And I mean, we live in a world where we care so much what other people think of us. And when you're in self-empowerment and self-love, you're just, you're riding the waves, you're riding the wind. And, you know, I, I, I caught myself today. I was showing a gentleman who's doing some stained glass, heart glass work. It looks like Jerry Garcia. It looks just like Jerry Garcia. Wow. <laughs> and I, and I wanted him to see my garden to get inspired for this art stained art glass thing he's going to do for my, my bathroom. I'm redoing my bathroom. So pretty. And, um, and so I said, instead of, you know, can you come down to see me? This what town went above me. And he did. And he was walking around and he was so funny. So Jerry Garcia, the beard, the hair. <laughs> well, wow, wow, dude, you did it right. You did it right. He brought his girlfriend with him. And he goes, you did it right. Wow, you, keep, you did it right. This is cool. And as an artist, I want him to feel the energy. Yes. The, feel the vibration. And he got it. But uh, I love I mean, I love, I caught myself loving that, sharing that with another person, kind of opening up in their their ability, their artistic ability, yes. feeding that, you know, yes. sharing yes. that, love sharing yes. that with each other. Because you don't get that often, that opportunity to do that and to share. Well, that's that. your strength. You're really good at sharing, James. I, 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 I really I share, good at it. I, in a way, Kelly, the, like I always say, the hardest part of my job is not talking to dead people. It's seeing the abilities and a, yeah. a, a soul has. And they don't see it for themselves. Yeah. And well, my job is to help them to see it for themselves as best yeah. as possible. Yeah. 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 You And you're really great at that. Mm. Mm. What, what, what other one do you have, Kelly? Okay. I have a good one here. <laughs> I have a good one here, everybody. In your toolbox, I want to know, are you resilient? Because resilience is a big part of psychological empowerment. Resilience is that quality that allows some people like to get knocked down in life but they can come back either strong or sometimes even as strong stronger it's it, it's it's the ability to rise from the ashes the ability if you get knocked down and in life we're all going to get knocked down but to be able to come back now let me tell you what causes what what gives somebody resilience it's often comes from really does come from one strong relationship that you had it could be a mother it could be a father it could be a caregiver it could be somebody that loved you because that's a really that's really where it comes from somebody in a responsive relationship this is where it comes from but if you didn't have that if you didn't have that and there are many people that we know that are not resilient because they didn't have that the good news here is that resilience can be learned. So it really does, a, it involves developing thoughts, if you can, and behaviors and actions that allow you to recover from a traumatic or a stressful event in life. So here are the ways to build resilience. So you want to prioritize your relationships. That means this, you want to be able to connect with people that are empathetic, that understand, and that these people are kind and that they remind you that you're not alone in the world. Okay. So Kelly, that's strange. Mm -hmm. those, those relationships, as you expand yeah. and evolve, those relationships around you, they're going to change. I mean, oh, absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Absolutely. And, you know, a soul comes into your life for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. And as right. you would change, again, that magnetic energy will shift. So people will right. be gone away if they don't get that vibration. Absolutely. And then that also allows more space for a good soul to come into your life. Correct. So that's one way. Another I way is like to it. avoid negative negativity or negative outlets or people that are negative. So if you're trying to build your resilience, you don't want to be around somebody that's going to knock you down, or you don't also want to go into negative situations, drugs, alcohol, anything like that, because that's going to make your, um, your neck, it's going to bring you down into a negative. It's going to pull, it's you, gonna pull you down. It's going to depress you. Yeah. It's absolutely. It's long so, run, it depresses you. Right, right. 
So another way to help with uh, building your resilience would be to help others take I action and help box. you. You do. You have that on with you. Yes, you have yes, a help helping others. Oh, James. yes, I do. Oh my God. So that's, that is a big way to help others. We want to be able to do that. Um, and we also want to be able to, um, not just help others, but we want to be empower able another person. to empower others, empower, because that is going to be huge with empowerment. Um, we want to be to set goals, set brave goals and move towards them because that helps you build this resilience. If you, if you set some goals it, and then you move towards them, it helps. And the last thing, you know, that you really want to do is you want to talk up to other people or yourself or write it down about what did you learn from the experience? What did you learn? You know, uh, we can, from the setback, what did you learn? Because that will always help you move forward. It's always important to kind of look at where you've come from with it and then begin the process and allow yourself to move forward. You know, James, I had to, I lost everything, as you know, with my brain injury. And literally I had to start, I was like the Phoenix rising. I had to literally come back, but I had resilience. I had it in spades. Not everybody has that, but that is the one of my one of my strengths is resilience. But everybody can get it. And, and the, you talk about those things that pull us back, but everything's an opportunity. Everything. Yes. And even though we look at it, it goes backwards. It's an opportunity. Like you said, look and see what you learned from this, what it taught you. Yes. Opportunity. It's it's and it's so yes. funny, Kelly, because I, I sometimes think we got to give space. In that we were used to wanting things right away, having why didn't go this way, why didn't go that way, why didn't get that job? But it's because the universe is setting something up for you much better and much greater right. for your highest good. So we got to like step back. We might not know it at the time when something happens, it feels negative, but guess what? And if it's going to work better for the future, it's and hard. that's some bit thing that people should put into their their spiritual toolbox to the knowing that the universe is setting up something better for you. The universe conspires for your highest good. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. That's I, so I, true. I have um, um, understanding the universal laws. So oh. action, reaction, what you give out, you get back. So that everything is energy and your thoughts are energy. And what kind of um, energy are you sending out to uh, the world? So if we're yes. sending everything out energy on another level, many see that the lights, the colors and the, and the texture and the uh, shapes, if you will, of that thought and and that thought not only affects that person but it has a rippling effect to everybody else so it's like you know rock in the in the lake and they're rippling that's what exactly what your thoughts do so are you responsible for your thoughts so being responsible for your thoughts the universal laws of cause and effect what are you giving out you got love and beauty and happiness and, and compassion or are you giving out hate and uh, and, and negativity Negativity. What, what, what are you drawing? And remember, we're magnets. We're all magnets. So you are magnet. You're, you're re-bringing into your universe. You're bringing what you think. What you think is your reality. Right now, as you sit here, you're a total summation of everything you thought before. Here it is. So it's really that, that wow. awareness. Yeah. So true. Oh my gosh, James. That that's a good one. And another one I have, Kelly, is connect to nature. Oh, connect excellent. The oneness of all things, the life right. force, the prana, and everything, yes. nature, animals. Be, I like to merge myself with the flowers or the trees and be kind of like in a weird way. And then I go back to something you said before I have to go back to it because I have to, I wrote it down. But merging myself with, let's say, the trees are in bloom and I try to become that tree. And what does it feel like to be in bloom? That flower, what's it feel like? It's just coming up from the dirt or I just, or the animal. What is it? When I got through my Maisie when she passed, what does it feel like as I become her and she becomes, switch places. It really wow. is amazing observational exercise. Yes, that's a great one. Yeah, that, the resilience, going back to your resilience, what I think is fabulous. And you said something which really just, um, you said there's one person in your life. I learned this from Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, right? So Fred Rogers in his documentary, which was fabulous. Yeah, it's it was fabulous. He yeah. said, for every single person out there, if you ever feel bad, remember that in your life, there's probably one person in your life who said something very positive to you. That's what you want to. It chills you when you said that. And that helped me. I mean, that helped me. All it takes is one person. My, my first, uh, my, Connie, the lady who. Uh, I was of, thinking of Connie, actually. When, mother, yeah. My, mm -hmm. my book is dedicated there. My fucking yeah. book. And she was my, I had a rough childhood. And she said, right. well, we all did. But in some way, she said, um, you know, there's something special about you. Don't ever, you know, get, let that light go or whatever it was she said in those words. And that meant the world to me because I respected her. 
and knew what she was about. And that got me through tough times. And right. it got me, that was my strength. That was my resilience. And it still is. This and it still is. Sure. Isn't that amazing? And you yeah. devoted the book to her, to Talking to Heaven. I, did, I, did I my first That's book. how important this was. No, I, I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't, we would not I be know. here. We would not be here. That's so <laughs> true. But that's all it takes is one. And I have to tell you, I've been watching, which I just loved, the uh, Julia Child. If anybody's watching Julia on HBO, it's so good. And I have a chef's background, and I love Julia Child. So I just have to say I love Julia Child. But there's this one scene where Julia, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to blow it for people who haven't seen it, but there's this <laughs> one scene where she gets attacked literally by, of all people, Betty Friedan. <laughs> Betty Friedan. And basically, it's kind of a true story. They had some Who's sort of- Betty a, Friedan, Kelly? He was the woman's um, feminist. She wrote The Feminine Mystique, and she okay. was very intense. And like she thought that Julia was, you know, here, Julia, she, you're trying to keep women in the kitchen. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to teach people how to cook. I mean, you know, it was just crazy. But in the one scene, uh, Fred Rogers comes to her aid. So when you said that, I just almost, I, I started crying when I saw the scene, James. He said to her, hi there, my name is Fred. He said, I'm your friend. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so good. That was a good one. <laughs> What's the name of that show, Kelly? Julia on HBO from, about Julia Child. Oh, James, I just love it. I just Here's love Connie. it. That's a picture of Connie. Oh, look at you. Oh, she's beautiful, James. And that's my dog, Sheena. At the oh, party. Sheena, you look so good. <laughs> my handsome guy. Yes, oh, my gosh. Cool. She I'm looks like she could have been your mother. Well, she really kind of was. I know, but she looks like you. Oh, yeah, so Connie's cute. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I predicted oh. her passing, but I, I was sitting with her and I saw, and all of a sudden her husband walked in and I felt, oh my God, heart attack. And he was going out to jog. And I thought, oh, God, I can't say anything. And a year later, I got a phone call from her husband and, he, and it was just after a reading I did this many, many years back. Oh. And he said, I have some sad news. Connie just passed away of a heart attack. Oh. 59. Oh, so, that's so young. So young. So. Oh my God! Do you feel her presence around? Like, I think I, I do. do. I do too. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. She's a real strong. A strong yes. House. Whoa! Oh my God! Yeah. Wow! You know, it's so funny when you don't feel your loved ones for a while, and then all of a sudden they they come in. Um, my friend Olivia, who passed over, and I yeah. was holding her British friend Olivia, and she showed me what it was like when she passed. And I said to someone in my show the other day, I said she never has been around. Well, the other night she came in spades, boy. She came in and she said, where have you been? She goes, oh, I've been busy. What do you think? I've been busy. <laughs> I've been busy. I'm come back here. I've been busy. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what do you think about this one? Ah, oh, they're confused. Ah, oh, there's so much to learn. <laughs> it's so funny. Don't take things so seriously, she said. Tell her we're not taking things so seriously. It doesn't mean anything. She was like, oh. <laughs> but that's such good advice. And she's an Aquarian. She was an Aquarian. She was very much a, she went on my cruises and she used to have the whole ship laughing and it was fabulous. She really was. She Aww. is. So she came back. That happens to all of us. We put the foot out there and you're open and hearing it. You can. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. Well, I have another one for everybody. So how about this? Be creative. Put this in your emotional toolbox, your psychological toolbox. Creativity boosts Creativity. our mental health. Okay, it's an asset and it's something that we can use every day. And everyday creativity could just be the way you uh, attack doing day to day activities. And you might just be a little more, you know, make things a little more, I don't know, personal or a little more uh, motivational or something. It's the way you perceive life is with creativity that will really help you in times of stress. Change the living room furniture around. Move your furniture around the Move house. Move your furniture around. That'll do it. Drive That's a different cool. way to work. Go a different way. You Wear know, something this... you've never worn before. There you go. I wore a tunic the other day. I haven't worn that since Roman, Roman days. So. <laughs> That's going back. Yeah. Act like, act like a different person. Act like, uh, I don't know. Right. Else. Just I, be creative. Be creative. I had, a, I, had a friend, I had a friend and we had um, a Russian hat day. We had a hat day where we put Russian hats on fur hats. Wait, we, Russian? I don't know if that's a good thing right now. <laughs> no, but um, but just to having us something as goofy pajama day. We had pajama day. We wore pajamas. Yeah, day. I love pajama day. Oh, you know, I love old, that old classic movie day. Oh. Um, stuff like that. You know what? I love pajama day, old classic music day, movie day. Oh, with, what? with Bloody Mary day. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. For joining Thanks, us. everybody. Thank you, Thanks, Renee. Renee.
Thanks, Thanks James. Bye. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean... 